Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at this month's Smart Art Box, and I wanted to let you know that um, from uh, November 21st until November 30th, they have $15 off all past Smart Art Boxes with a coupon code BLACK2016. It's their Black Friday sale. I just wanted to let you know because I got that email the other day and I didn't want to forget about it. So um, if you've seen me use anything in the past from Smart Art Box that you like, make sure you check it out and see if they have those boxes available. Saves them money. We all like that, don't we? Especially this time of year. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look. What do we have this month? It looks like we have some type of mixed media acrylic paints, fluid acrylics. We have a primary yellow, cobalt blue hue, titanium white, and pyrrole red. So these are some nice primary colors. And I'm going to do some mixing to see what sort of... Um, variety of colors I can get from these. These are from the Deco Art Me uh, Media line, which I have never tried before, so I'm kind of excited about that. We have a PBO relief outliner, so that should give us like a 3D line. We should be able to like draw 3D lines with this, I think. That should be kind of cool. I've never used this. Um, and then we have Deco Art Media Texture Sand Paste. So that might be cool to like maybe scrape over stencils or something. Let's take a peeky in here. Oh, look at that. It's, hmm, it smells good. It, it smells like paint. <laughs> but I like the way paint smells, so good for me, right? <laughs> ah, painty. So we got some nice texture paste there. We have a Cache by De La Rowney 101 Mixed Media Pad. I have not used this, so I'll probably do my mixing, my color mixing on here and see what we can get. That'll be a good practice for that. We have got a small number two Da Vinci round brush. Something tells me I'm going to want to get some brushes from a past Smart Art Box or something. I'm going to want bigger brushes because I'm a big brush girl. I like big brushes and I cannot lie. And then we have a couple black gessoed panels. So lots of fun stuff in this month's Smart Art Box. So I say we clean up this mess and start experimenting. I decided since uh, mixed media should be fun and freeing that I would just jump right in with this uh, gold outliner and start creating a design. Now you do have to pierce the um, the paint and what I did was I just unscrewed that and I found another paint tube that had like a little pokey thing on it and I just poked a hole in there so that uh, so a lot of times paint do that so that it doesn't get um, messed up, you know, it doesn't get dried out or anything before you use it. Now I'm just going to test on a piece of palette paper to make sure I get the hang of it. Oh, that's pretty darn easy. Okay, that's nice. Look at that. You get a nice raised line. All right, so what I was thinking um, is that maybe I would do something with like some ornaments and some holly leaves. I think that would be kind of pretty and um, and Christmassy. So I'm wondering, maybe I should sketch it on with a pencil. I'm just kind of worried that maybe I'll make a mistake um, because I don't have a uh, I can draw. Draw some holly leaves. I'm just thinking that I'll probably botch this if I don't. This is probably not very interesting. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sketch some of these some of this on with a pencil. I don't think you'll be able to see it when I'm sketching, but when I hold it to the light you can. That's what I'm gonna do, and we'll come back when it's time to outline, okay? Well, I can't say it's my greatest work, but I do have some ornaments and <laughs> berries and holly sketched on for what it's worth um but you know what i don't i have nothing to lose that's why i look at it um <laughs> sometimes that's how you have to look at it i'm gonna start on this side and work my way over so i don't smear my hand in it and um hopefully it is as easy as it was for me to use it on the scrap paper i'm giving gentle pressure and just moving as I go, and I am resting the tip of this um, outliner bottle on my canvas. I tried using a compass. I couldn't find my good metal compass, and I had to use a plastic one, and it was horrible, and I kept, um, I couldn't get good circles, so I just ended up freehanding everything. But, um, but that's all right. This is mixed media, and it should look handmade, and... That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, uh, this is the design. I do have to report that this got a little hard to squeeze after a couple of minutes. Um, I did fold it up to help put a little more pressure on it, but um, but this was definitely a little difficult for me to squeeze after a little bit. I'm going to cap it up so it doesn't dry up, 
and I'm going to let this dry and then we can go and do some mixing in our journal that was provided in the kit. Okay, I have put some of my colors out on palette paper and I will tell you that I had to stir up the yellow and the white. They were really thick. Um, and when I first squirted out the white, some binder came out. So you got to make sure you, you shake them up good. And if they don't want to shake or it feels like you've got a big, like, um, clump in there, or it just doesn't feel like it's mixed up good, just take off the top. I used a barbecue skewer and I, um, I mixed it that way. That way you'll have a nice, uh, nice consist consistency paint to work with. And I'm using the brush that came in the kit. Um, we'll see how that does. I'm going to take some of this uh, yellow. I'm going to paint each color out on their own. Um, I think I'll do kind of like in a color wheel just so I can see what I have here. I'm going to do this uh, yellow right there. That's my brush. And I don't have to have my brush super dry. If I was going on to a canvas, I would dry my brush off really well, but on paper it's it's absorbent. So it, if I have a little water on my brush, it actually helps because otherwise it's going to drag a lot on paper. And my blue. So basically what I want to do here is see what I can get for colors. So if I do the blue with a little bit of white, let's see, what am I going to get there? I'm going to get this nice uh, tint. And that also makes your, pick, uh, your paint a little more opaque, which I'll probably have to do uh, to make it show up on the black. Let's do, I want to bring out that red a little bit more actually. And let's do red and some white. We'll get a nice pink. So a tint is a color plus white. Just a little artsy uh, term for you. I'm going to extend that out a little bit too. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Yeah, the, th the yellow was really thick. It didn't feel like a fluid acrylic for me. Um, I don't know. I shouldn't, we haven't had freezing weather in Maine yet, so we shouldn't, it shouldn't have frozen on the, on the way here, but something you have to think about with acrylics. Okay, so now I want to mix some secondary colors. So I'm going to start with, um, yellow and red to make an orange. I know this is like nursery school, right? Hopefully you're not terribly bored. I just want to see what kind of colors I can get from these particular paints. Ooh, that's more of a red orange. That red is really strong. I don't know if I've used anything by Deco Art before. Okay, so there I get kind of an uh, orange there. It's all right. And then I'll take that yellow, that a uh, red orange there and put that right in between. And then I'm going to add more yellow to my orange and make a yellow orange. So we'll have our tertiary, tertiary colors while we're at it. And put that right there. I basically want to see what kind of colors am I going to be able to get with this set just so I um, can kind of plan the colors I use in my project accordingly. So I have a feeling this is not going to give me a great purple so you know we'll see. Let's do some red. I might be wrong because the red looks a little orangey to me so I don't know. Give me kind of like a wine color. I think that's about yeah, a little more blue there. The red seems to be the strongest. Okay, so this is what we're going to get for our purple. It's kind of a gray, grayed purple because of that, because the colors are not really biased towards each other. And then we'll take a little more blue and add that into the mix. And we'll take a little more red and add that to the mix. Now we'll see what we can get for a green. I do have high hopes for a good green from this mix. So let me grab some yellow and a little bit of blue because we know that yellow is not super strong. And I'm still using the brush that came in the kit. It came with one small round. Which I guess if you're doing a really detailed outline with the um, with the gold, you'd want a finer tip if you're doing something like stained glass. So there's our green. We'll do a little more yellow with that green, which I happen to have a big glob yellow, so I'll just use that. We'll get a yellow green. A little more yellow in that. And then we'll get a blue green by adding more blue to the green. And 
this uh these three colors give me you know a, a okay range not as um not as big of a range of colors as I would like. Um, I probably would have preferred a magenta and a cyan, so I could have got a, a broader spectrum of colors. But um, but we'll see. Maybe these colors are more opaque, and that's why they were choose for, chosen for this kit. Uh, I'm going to check back on our board. I have I'm pretty. You know what? I can check the thing here and see if that's dry. Actually, look at that. That is almost dry. So I'm going to give the board a few more minutes to dry and then we're going to go ahead and start filling in our design and see what we get. Okay, I went and had my lunch. It took about half an hour and came back to find that my board was dry. And before I went up, I actually decided I would doodle around a little bit with this um, with this pen. And one thing I found that is that if you're doing a large design, I recommend you break it up, like do a little bit, take a rest, do a little bit more so you can avoid your hand from cramping from trying to hold that because it is a little awkward. Um, maybe if you're used to using this type of thing, like if you use the, you know, fabric paint that's really thick, may maybe you're used to it. I'm just not used to it. So I did find that it was much easier for me to come back and I just did the little smart art logo just for, uh, just for fun. You could see it really writes fine and it's kind of fun. Um, I would definitely maybe use this on some glass do some like fancy glass painting. I don't know. I'll have to like research this a little bit and see if it's like dishwasher safe or hand washing safe. But I think this would be really pretty on like a wine bottle or something or a candle holder or maybe something that doesn't have to be washed because um, I do like the effect. I mean, it's a little, a little rough on my hands at first, but but I do like the effect. Okay, so here's our board and it's pretty well dry. Um, like I mentioned before, I did go grab a couple extra brushes because the um, the brush that came with it is just really small. I rarely ever use a brush this small and some of these larger areas are just gonna, I think, look streaky if I try to paint it with a small brush like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I just left my paint out. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's fine. I am going to start by mixing some blue and white and I want maybe put a little touch of yellow in that. I want kind of like an aqua color. Um, for that ornament on the bottom. I love aqua and red. I know you've seen me use those before, but I just think they're really pretty. I don't know if I'll get a really good aqua, but um, but I'll try. A kind of like a Bar Harbor gray here, maybe a little bit more color, a little less white. And I'm using palette paper. You could put a piece of wax paper down. Um, to protect your work surface if you want to. Oh, that's covering really nice. Now, I'm going to have to be careful not to cover up my gold lines or I'm going to have to go back in again and um, put them back on after it's dry and I really uh, would rather just keep them nice right now. I bet I could use like a damp Q-tip and, uh, and clean it up. Let's try that. I think I've got some Q-tips right over here. That's usually my trick. First I'll try a dry Q-tip. We'll see if that works. Oh, that works pretty well. And I'll just keep that handy for when I do it again. And I'm just going to fill in these guys. Then after that's filled in, I'm going to use a side loading technique to add a little shadow. So I've just got my regular uh, color on my brush and then I'm going to tip the edge in the blue. So you can see how I've got blue on one side. Just work it into my brush a little bit. Retip it a little bit just so I have that make sure I have it on there and then just with one stroke along the edge with my wet paint Which is blending really well. I can put a nice um, a Nice shadow in there just gives it a little bit of a dimension And then I'm simply going to use the same technique to fill in all the shapes on this board This red is nice and opaque. I'm really pleased that will mean it won't need another coat I'm still able to use this flat brush in these larger berries um, I like a flat brush because I don't get brush strokes so much, but if you get into an area where it's a little smaller, you can go ahead and switch to a round brush. Try not to overpaint um, and fuss with an area too much, or you might end up lifting the paint underneath. So if I'm going down to that area there, I can go with that brush that came in the kit because it's a much smaller space. I'm thinking that maybe they intended um, people to do a uh, technique with more detail so there would be smaller areas to fill in and that's why they did the smaller brush here. And you can also go in with a smaller brush. If you missed any little bits in some of these other berries, you can go and fill them in. 
if you do need to make another coat, if your paint isn't opaque enough and you're seeing the canvas through, then just let it dry completely and then go back in. That way you won't lift the paint underneath. So now we're going to mix a bunch of green paint. So we're going to want to uh, to do that all at once. And I'm actually going to um, just put out some fresh paint for that because I know it's going to take quite a bit because I have a lot of leaves there. So I'm going to squirt out um, some fresh yellow. And I'm going to put out um, a little bit of, actually, I think I could probably take the blue that I have. I think I probably have enough blue right there. And we're going to mix it up. That's really yellow. I need more blue. I might need to squirt some out, but we'll see. Usually yellow is the weakest color. Yellow is also a very opaque color, which is nice because um, if you're working on a black canvas, it's going to really, um, it's going to really stand out. This green is a little dull, but I'm going to see how it looks like on the black because it may look all right on the black. It's also looking a little opaque. Um, I think I'm going to switch to the flat brush again because sometimes round brushes, especially if a color is not as opaque, um, will make it even streakier. So with a flat brush, a lot of times you can lay down a nicer, uh, solid color. But, oh, I'm finding this is really, really transparent. The blue is very transparent. Um, it wasn't noticeable here because we added so much white to it, but I noticed it where I was putting my swatches on my, um, I'm just going to go over that and wipe it off. I think I was noticing that on my, um, journal art journal where I was testing it, that the blue was more transparent and streaky. So, I mean, I'm doing this with this, with the paints that came in this box. I probably would switch to like a, uh, a more opaque acrylic that was already green just because it would fill in a little easier and not be so streaky. This is definitely going to need two coats. So uh, you want to fill this in and then uh, when it's dry, put another coat on all these leaves. I ended up going in and filling this area in with grain, thinking maybe there'd be a lot of uh, holly back there. I can always go over more with the gold afterwards. Um, I'm definitely going to need another coat. Uh, I wasn't too careful trying to stay away from the gold lines. I just went in with a Q-tip and wiped off the gold afterwards. Now I'm going to go in with a round brush and I'm going to paint this ornament. Um, I couldn't get a very good purple from these colors, so I think I'm going to keep it, um, maybe I'll do the outside yellow on that one. I think the yellow was fairly opaque, so I think, well, no, the yellow is fairly transparent too. That must be why, um, why that, because the blue and the yellow are transparent. That's why we're having a hard time with our leaves. So that's kind of tricky if you're trying to work on a black canvas. I guess probably what I should have done if I had a time machine, go back in time, paint all these pieces white, and then um, and then go back over with the colors. But um, but then again, I mean, in real life, am I really going to do that? No, I'm not. So let's just keep on trucking this way, and we'll see what happens. Why don't I actually, why don't I add some white to this right now? Yeah, I'll just do this right now because... Um, then I'll just put a coat of yellow on top and it will be, it'll be fine. And that way I don't have to go back in and do, redo everything. I was fooled by how opaque the red was. And I was just thinking, oh, though, yellow is going to be opaque because yellow is usually opaque. But, uh, not in this situation. So these transparent acrylics will be handy for certain applications. Just kind of keep that in mind when you want that sort of effect. All right, I'm going to go in and fill in this one too. And now that I'm thinking about it, now that I've started to use this product and I'm getting used to what works and what doesn't, I should have just kept that um, ornament plain and gone in afterwards and did any details with the, um, oh, I just got water in there off my brush. Um, then done the details with the gold. That would have made so much more sense, but. I didn't know that then, and now I do. But you know what would be kind of cool, I think, to use that pro that uh, outliner on watercolor paper and then do watercolors, like to do like a stained glass effect or something. That'd make a really pretty Christmas card. I think I'll probably do that because that would be really pretty. I'm also going to go around and give these berries another coat while I'm at it. I'm not very... Um, I'm not very used to working on a colored canvas. I usually work on a white or a linen canvas, so... That's kind of new and interesting to me. I'm going to try to get to stay around these gold lines. I think if any little black streaks poke through like next to the gold, I think it's going to add dimension. So I kind of want to, I kind of want to encourage that. 
the nice thing I like about this, uh, I think this, these paints would be good for printmaking because they have stayed wet on my palette for a long time. And that's great because I often, um, I often want that when I am, when I am painting. I'm thinking I'd like a little texture on that ornament. I think what I'm going to do is actually use my finger and dip it into some blue and make little dots going around. Because Christmas ornaments can be all kinds of, you know, patterns and decorations. I want to do a painting of a watercolor of some ornaments, but all my ornaments are all packed away. Um, I can't bring them out before December 1st. I just can't. I can't deal with Christmas ornaments before then. <laughs> you know, mainly because my house is a mess and I need to clean desperately before I even think about putting up Christmas decorations. I've gone ahead and put second coats on everything and I'm still getting very streaky effects so I think I'm just gonna go with it and make myself like a streaky kind of highlighty yellow light yellow green color and I'm just gonna dab it into the highlight areas of these um, holly leaves because it was really kind of bugging me how streaky it was and honestly if I had to do this project over again um, you're probably thinking why didn't you just do it over again Lindsay um, because I want you guys to see what happens <laughs> I, I like these teachable moments actually um, I decided that since I'm getting brush strokes and it's go looking very streaky that I'm gonna take advantage of that and actually kind of dab into these leaves a highlight area and I'm going to make it very brush strokey, very impressionistic looking. And if I had to do it again, I would definitely have just painted it first and then did my outlining because I, um, I don't like painting around the, um, the gold. If I was doing a watercolor, it'd be great because the watercolor wouldn't stick to the gold, but with acrylics, it's a whole other uh, ball game. And as you know, I don't paint with acrylics a lot, so I don't have that instinctively, oh, that's what I'll do, you know? Um, mindset when I go to approach an acrylic project. That thing I kind of like about these smart art kits is that you do have to kind of stretch your creativity and your imagination because you don't know what you're going to get and a lot of times they're not the things that you would typically uh, go out to the store and buy so um, so you do end up with some pretty interesting uh, <laughs> pretty interesting how you do end up with some pretty interesting stuff because of that I think I might actually do the same thing with some blue like in my green so it's a little bit darker and actually tap dab some of that dab ah, dab some of that into the um, I'm, getting fr I'm getting flustered into the shadow areas too just to give it a little bit more thickness um, because of the transparency of this paint I was I was expecting it to be much more uh, opaque but um, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna work with it. We're going to roll with the punches here. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is I'm not giving up. <laughs> we're gonna push through this. Um, I'm gonna add some highlights onto the holly berries because highlights usually make things better. So we're gonna use that small brush that came in the kit, and we're just gonna put on a couple little highlights. I'm doing a like a curved line at the top of the berry, and then two little sparkles at the bottom. And we're gonna, we'll also do some highlights on the uh, ornaments as well. It's a fun process though. I mean, especially using something you've never, ooh, never used before. I don't know what I got into there. I got into some very sticky, sticky paint, I guess. And probably some paint that's started to dry already because I have had this out on my, um, on my table for a while. So I'm gonna put some nice, big, um, highlights on the big ornaments make them look a little shinier and that's just a little trick to kind of <laughs> help you make things look a little nicer um, and we'll do some on the Little toppers there okay so um I think there was one more thing in the kit that I didn't get a chance to use and I think I'm gonna try it because it's a texture paste texture sand paste so I'm wondering is this is neutral I'm wondering if I add white paint to this if I can get the look of snow so what I'm gonna do is actually fold over my palette so I have a little fresh space there and I am gonna scoop some of this out and mix some white paint with it 
I am going to use a palette knife that I already have on hand for this. I shouldn't need more than that, I don't think. I'm just wondering what color this is going to dry. That's my only, uh, that's my only concern, but, um, but, you know, uh, this isn't a masterpiece, so I am willing to experiment on it. So I just want to put enough paint in there that it will tint it, but I don't want to put so much paint in it that it dilutes it. That looks pretty snowy to me. That looks nice and white to me. It's going to drop on my hand. I don't want that. <laughs> There. Now let's try um, adding that to different areas in here that may have some, that, you know, would have snow maybe gathered on it. I'm going to use this brush kind of as a scoop. I'm going to scoop up some and put some on the berries. I am, if I, if I need to go over the gold, I'm going over the gold. I'm not going to worry about the gold so much. I've kind of, um... I've kind of botched the gold. I should have waited on the gold. But live and learn. Now I know. I'm really curious to see how this looks when it dries. Um, I haven't used this type of texture paste before, so it may like be really cool. It may be better to use with a stencil. I don't know. I don't have any stencils in this kit, so um, I am trying to keep it, except for these extra couple of brushes with stuff that came in the kit. I'm also trying to tap a little bit so I get that kind of snowy texture. And I suppose you could sprinkle some glitter or salt in it to make it look extra snowy. I think this is really helping disguise the fact that I was really, I really got messy trying to paint the, uh, paint the, um, stuff around the gold. I did not do very well at that. Um, so I think this is kind of disguising that pretty well. So that's a good thing. Um, I don't think I'm going to put the snow on top of the, um, the ornaments though. I think I'll stick it just on the natural stuff. Like maybe you can't, someone came out and placed the ornaments after the snowfall. We actually got snow this morning, just some little, um, brief, brief, um, flurries, nothing major, but it was kind of, kind of neat to see. Kind of neat to see when you know it's not going to stay, I should say. Oh, that looks, I think that looks better. I think so. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments below. Okay, so something else I was thinking would be kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to go back to the pen. And I think if I'm careful, I can just go right ahead and uh, and doodle in with this thing. Um, like I mentioned before, I wish I'd waited. So I'm going to see if I can go over what I did um, originally. It will end up just having a super duper relief effect because, um, it's going to have two layers <laughs> anywhere that I've gone before. So, so it might actually end up being super duper tactile and textural. Well, we're pretty good on that. I mean, I guess any place I feel like I really need to go over it again, I'm just going to go over it again with this gold. But please, if you are doing this for the first time, just save your aggravation and do the gold last. I think I want to fill in the tops of my little ornaments, though. I don't think I like the highlight on that. Let's just fill those suckers right in. And maybe I wouldn't have put the hooks on the ornament. I might have like made it look like they were hanging from holly branches, but... I didn't have a very well developed plan apparently when I started, so uh so they're just like randomly floating in our holly garden. I think the reason it's kind of hard on your hands to squeeze this is because like you can't really rest your hand on your work, especially uh once you start because you don't want to smudge what you already have. I think that's the big reason why it's why it's difficult. Now I also thought it'd be cool to kind of put some swirls and some like filigree. So I am going to do that as well. I almost feel, I don't know if I'm supposed to have my hand, I'm supposed to have this. I think I'm probably supposed to have this hovering above the uh, board a little bit so I get a smoother look, but I'm having a really hard time keeping my hand steady for that. Cause I really feel like I have to squeeze hard on this. Maybe I should have popped a bigger hole in. Oh, you know what? I'm maybe folding that down isn't the best idea. Cause I just made a, uh, I made a hole in the bottom of this. 
so but I'm afraid if I don't fold it then I'm going to um, it's all going to squish to the back of the thing and I'm not going to get the pressure that I need well this seems to be working all right if I do if I do the lines and I have it tipped away from where the stuff's coming out the tipped away from the direction I'm I'm coming from it does seem to work all right I guess You can add some dots, I bet. Let's try dots. Well, dots are pretty easy, actually. I should have done the whole thing in pointillism. Oops. Definitely got to make sure you lift it off the paper before you go to make your next dot, or you're going to have a have something. You're going to have a, a conjoined dot. That's kind of fun now. You get the hang of it. It's just like learning to use any other tool. You've got to get the hang of it. That's kind of fun, actually. You know what? <clears throat> I think that I'm enjoying this now. The more, you know, now that I'm starting to, I've gotten past the bad pancake stage, it's starting to look decent. This might actually, this might actually become something. I was actually thinking as I was first designing this that it would be cool to do as like a, um, album cover like for a December daily or a Christmas album I know some people keep all their scrap Christmas scrapbook pages together um, and some people do uh, album every December I'm not one of those people I am NOT that organized well hey that's not too bad I kind of like that I mean it's upside down for you guys but I wonder if I could, after it's all dry, if I could just kind of use that like an emery board and kind of sand off some of the areas that I didn't, that I didn't uh, wipe the paint off that was supposed to be gold. I don't know, maybe I'll just go and put some veins in here. Well, there you have it. This is the finished uh, piece here. I'm pretty pleased with how it came out, especially when I was ha considering halfway through this, I was like, oh boy, how am I gonna save this one, Lindsay? Um, but it, I think that the um, addition of the texture paste was kind of fun. Uh, hopefully it retains its uh, its uh, opaque white look that I from the white paint. If not, I'll just pay, repaint it with the white after it's dry. I will cut in a photo of it all dry so you can see it right here on screen. Um, and my thoughts about the products in this kit, I'm not a big acrylic painter. It's probably my least favorite art medium. Um, nothing against it, it's just personally, I'm a watercolorist by most accords. I do like mixed media, but I, I don't like these mixed media paints as much as other um, acrylics I have tried. I was very surprised um, because these are not cheap paints that uh, that I didn't like them more, but they just weren't my cup of tea. I did like the outliner and I would definitely purchase this again. I think I wouldn't bend up the bottom of the tube like I did this time because it made it a puncture. Next time I will just use my tube bringer and I'll ring it up as I go to keep the pressure in there while I'm, while I'm working. Um, if anybody else have used this, it, was it hard for you to squeeze? I found it a little hard to squeeze after a while and my hands would get shaky so that's the only downside to that but I love the look of the filigree here and I think that would be so pretty if I just went to like even the dollar store and bought some like colored vases and just use this to add uh, a beautiful like holiday touch to you know candle holders and vases and stuff like that I love that look I think this is really stunning especially against the black um, and I don't usually use a black canvas so that was something kind of fun and new to try I think that that's the best thing about the smart art boxes is that you get to try something that's out of your comfort zone and if you are interested in this box or any of the other past boxes from smart art I did see a coupon code black 2016 I hope it's okay that I share it it's for 15 dollars off any past boxes through November 30th so um, I'll put that link in the video description you can go check that out and um, if you're a, uh, a brave soul and you want a surprise box of art supplies delivered to your house every month for around 50 bucks you can subscribe to smartartbox.com it also makes a really nice gift for an artist in your family especially one that doesn't have a lot of stuff yet because they'll get to try a little bit of everything and get exposed to different medias um, as they as they get their subscription boxes and learn it's a lot of fun thank you so much for watching I want to thank smartartbox.com for sponsoring this tutorial thank you for watching until next time happy crafting